I found the video that was like in an Australian accent, and it was like titled that. That's very popular. Oh, you didn't get one? And the description was like, this is silly. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Woods? Yeah. Oh yeah. Now it's gonna fall out. See, see. Stop playing with that. Don't do that. Please don't try to stop. Then Adam. Oh my gosh. Adam, you have to pay attention. <laughs> stop playing on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> and it's like having flash for that. Can't eat right now. It disturbs your brain. <laughs> you have to eat the knowledge. <laughs> The calculus. 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 Like, I can only take like a calculus. Calculus. Whatever, right? That's what exactly right. That's my... But she said it was from... She said it was like that. Or her oh, father. No. Here, here, here. Still messed up on. So Kimo. What's the cool? Like <laughs> yeah. Right. Andrew like, Garfield High School. I'm and awesome. a video of Mr. Wood. Okay, here we go. So, this um, question is pulled from a free response question. Okay, thank you. Um, this is pulled from a free response question. <coughs> Um, but adapt it, obviously, because all you're doing, all you're being asked to do here is just find the area of two regions. Uh, a typical free response question would have a little bit more to it than this, but be that as it may, here we go. Okay, so uh, let f and g be the functions given by f of x equals one-fourth plus sine of pi x, and g of x equals four to the negative x. Let r be the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the y-axis and the graphs of f and g, so you can see there's r region, and let s be the shaded region in the first quadrant enclosed by the graphs of f and g as well. So it's S, t F, S, sorry, two different regions there, okay? So first question we are asked is to find the area, or first thing we are asked to do is to find the area of R, okay? So we want to, <coughs> right, so we are, we are going to need our calculators for this. And, and why is that, Christian? What's, what's going to require us to use our calculators uh, here? We need to know where they intersect. At. Yes, we need to know where those two curves intersect, okay? Because right now, if I want to find the area of region R here, it would be the integral from what? Well, we'd start integrating from zero, right? Because R has the y-axis as its boundary, left boundary. But we have no idea what R's rightmost boundary is. We have no idea what that point of intersection is. And like Christian said, we have to find that using our graphing calculator. So we're going to go to our y equals here, and we'll do one-fourth plus sine of pi x. Make sure all you physics students, you're set in radian mode and not oh degree God. mode. Okay, not degree. Okay. Uh, and again, it's four to the negative x. Okay, so you can see here, obviously, there's more to the graph being shown <coughs> than what's shown in, the, in our picture there, okay? But you can kind of see there's the teeny tiny region R right there, and then there's S, that region right there. And so we want to find the point of intersection here. So we'll do second trace, right? Intersect, all right? First curve, second curve. And then for the guess, make sure your little cursor there is near that intersection point. And then it should give you the point of intersection, what we want. Yep, right there. You can see it's blinking just barely. Say again. That's sad. Okay. <laughs> All right. So our x coordinate there is point one seven eight. Okay. Point one seven eight. So that's our integrals. Limits of integration from zero to point one seven eight. By the way, that's potentially a point there, since we had to like find that limit of integration. There's potentially a point involved in that from the free response question. So that's kind of nice. Um, all right, and now what? Let's see here. So what will I be integrating? The uh, x minus. Yeah, is it going to be g minus f, or is it going to be f minus g? It is g minus f. If you look here, right, there's, <coughs> there's g. That's the curve of g. So g is on top for the region r. f is on the bottom. So you could just write g minus f, but I'll go ahead and write the functions in. So it's 4 to the negative x minus the quantity, please make sure you put parentheses around this, otherwise it will be wrong, because this minus sign won't distribute like it should. Okay, dx. You can put parentheses around the upper limit too, it's not a bad idea, so parentheses around the upper limit minus, or so upper bound minus lower bound. On a more of a general question, upper question on the AP test, when it asks us to do this kind of stuff, uh -huh. is it okay 
to just write like F and G? F yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. If they have if already they been have, defined as yeah, such. Yeah. Yes. So here in this case, it's absolutely fine to write G of X minus F of X DX. That's fine. Okay. And then, so, and that's fine. And now we want to find the actual area. So what we can do now is just put a little, like, squiggly equal sign and actually just do this integral. Right? There's no need to, like, do this by hand. We could do it. Well, we could do, yeah, anyway. We we'll do it by calculator. Here? What's that? Why do we need to squiggly? Is there an exact, is there an exact answer? Mm. I guess we estimated it. Be, I mean, it won't, well, you'll see. The value we're going to get is not going to be exact, so. So, uh, math 9, so that gives the Fn int, right? And I don't need to retype these curves in because they're already typed in my y1 and y2, right? There they are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go ahead and just use bars y bars function. It should be y2, though, minus bars y bars function y1. With respect to x, from 0 to Point one seven eight. <coughs> Voila. So again, you can put an equal sign. I think that's fine. Uh, zero point zero six five. Remember calculus commandment: Thou shalt use radians, and thou shalt use three decimal places. Say again. Question? No. So there it is. All right. So go ahead. Take two seconds. Set up for S. Try S. <coughs> we know the starting point. Oh, that's nice. Okay, we have answers. Yes. Time is up. Oh well. Anna, do you have an answer? Final answer. 
Say for what? what? Point three four five. Okay, what was your setup for your integral? Um, so your, what were your limit? Your limits of integration were were they point one seven eight to one? Yeah. Okay, and then you had one fourth sine of pi x minus four to the negative x. So you did f minus g. Okay. So again, this is why it's, it's helpful to use that y1 and y2 because <coughs> it, it <coughs> makes those parentheses a little bit easier to manage. <coughs> so what would you get? 0. 0.410? Yeah, that's right. Good job. Okay. That's right. Good work. <coughs> okay. Okay, let's try this next one here. Go ahead, and I'm going to have you do that one, too. Just try the next one. <coughs> Number seven is not calculator active. You can use your calculators to help you if you want. Okay, so you first want to figure out what that region looks like. <coughs> Okay, so again, the region is in the first quadrant. Okay, it's the area of the region that's in the first quadrant, bounded above by the square root of x, and below by the line x minus 2 and the x-axis. So maybe we should like just take like 20 seconds and just think about what that region really is here. <coughs> okay, it's in the first quadrant alone, bounded above by the square root of x, and below by the line x minus 2 and the x-axis. Okay, so take 20 seconds and just think about what that region is going to be. Don't, if you want to go ahead and start setting up, feel free to, but if you're kind of like, whoa, I'm not sure, just hang on. So think about what that region is going to be. Okay. So the region right here has square root of x is 1. Here's the line x minus 2, and the x-axis is a boundary as well. So what region? It's this. Okay, just that alone. Okay. So we get question. Right over here? It would be infinite. Exactly right. So you guys see that? Very important. Tyler's question there. He said, how do you know it's not this region? because it's unbounded, right? It's bounded here by the x-axis, it's bounded here by x minus 2, it's bounded here by square root of x, but it's going to continue going out there forever. It's going to be infinite area, so it won't be, it's unbounded, okay? It's not, why isn't it this region? Because that's below, that's not Because it's quadrant. below, it's not first quadrant, it's below the x-axis, so yes, it's not first quadrant. Yeah, I don't know. So now you've got to set up the integral here. Well, I would think <coughs> it would be integral from 0 to 4 square root of x minus x minus Okay, so yeah, so let's think about this. So if we integrate, if we say 0 to 4, because it does go from 0 to 4 here, right? And if we say the square root of x minus x minus 2, top curve, square root of x minus bottom curve, square x minus 2, we might think that's what we're supposed to do here. But why isn't that right? Because it includes the part below the x-axis. 
Right, because this, if we integrate from 0 to 4, okay, we're, we're, we're including this then as well, right? We don't want to include that part. <coughs> so how should we go about doing this, do you think? Hannah, question or comment? Yeah, we could use that as we could use that as a second curve. Yeah, that f of x equals zero there. Exactly right. And so we have two different curves then as our bottom boundaries then, right? So what should we do to fix that? Connor, you want to say something? Well, for the <coughs> for also like where uh, the bottom line is exactly. So it's two. I'll give you a hint. It's two. Right here, you're saying? Yeah. Two. Minus zero if we want to, right? That's what you're, I think that's what you're trying to get at, right? That we have, a, we have this, this curve here is zero, right? So it's top curve minus bottom curve, so square root of x minus zero. But really, could just say square root of x. Plus. And there it is. Exactly right. You have to break it up. Two different integrals there. Okay, is that what you're going to say too, Tyler? True. <coughs> you could, yes, absolutely. You could use geometry here. That is like triangle, so you could literally, yeah, you could do what Ryan said and then just subtract off that area. Mm -hmm. That would actually work. Yes, Brent? Could you have also just taken the original one, the 0 and 4, and then subtract the integral of square root of x from 0 to 2? Well, we wouldn't want to subtract... All right, let me think about that. So you want to do this integral, which would yield all this area, and then you subtract what? From 2 to 4. Uh, two. Oh. That would work as well, but that's because of symmetry, I think. It g ends up being those two triangles. Oh, so really what you want to do, would you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, that, that works, but I think only because of symmetry, because the fact that this triangle here is the same as that triangle there. Yeah. But that's not mm -hmm. something you could consistently Right, you wouldn't want to do that on a consistent basis. Instead, I think subtracting off this, this triangle here, though, that would be fine, yes. Okay, so anyway, well, we can do this real quick here, right? So it's the 0 to 2 of x to the 1 half plus 2 to 4 of x to the 1 half minus x plus 2 dx, right? I distributed the, the minus sign here. Okay, integral of x to the 1 half is x to the what? 3 halves, and we put a 2 thirds out front, and we evaluate that from 0 to 2, and then plus the integral, oops, I'm going to go ahead and integrate that too, sorry, so it's another 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 1 half x squared plus 2x evaluated from 2 to 4. <coughs> okay, you got a question? It's probably safer to put a plus C there than to not put a plus C. Like Mr. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I should. I don't know. I, yeah, that's a good question. I need to check up on that. <coughs> I need to check up on that. <coughs> okay, so anyway, uh, plugging in here, 2 is the upper limit. It'll be 2 cubed. 8 squared to 8 is 2. All right, so it's going to be like, ugh. I'm just going to leave it unsimplified because I don't want to spend too much time on the evaluation here. Okay. It'll be minus 0. Use your calculator. Oh, what did you get for the calculator then? If you do the calculator. 3.33 repeating. Okay, 3.3. It's like 3.33, 3, 3, 3, 3, 5, 4, 4. Oh, so, okay. So, 3 point, I got you. 3, 3, 3, we'll say, but it's not repeating. So, yeah. we'll say approximately that. Okay, it's irrational. We could simplify that without a calculator, but we'll do it with, with because I want to not waste a lot of time on that. Okay, the important part was this. Now, there's another way to do this problem. Okay. So, what was the issue with this? Why do we have trouble? Right? It because our bottom curve changed. Right? Our bottom curve changed. But what if instead of integrating and doing everything with respect to x, what if we integrate with respect to y here? What if we did it in terms of y? <coughs> with respect to x, we're talking about, like, you know, these little rectangles, they come off the x-axis, right? Our area kind of like is from the x-axis and up towards the curve. If we integrate with respect to y, it's no longer it's no longer comes off the x-axis; it comes off the y-axis. And instead of talking about like kind of like a vertical, like a horizontal accumulation of like these little vertical rectangles, it'll now be a vertical accumulation of little horizontal rectangles. And our limit would just be zero. 
So if we, right, so if we did this in terms of y, we would not be integrating from 0 to 4, or 0 to 2 and 2 to 4. We would be integrating from 0 to 2, right? From 0, the bottom, up to 2. And instead of doing top curve minus bottom curve, with respect to y, it will be like the y change we would do then. Not top minus bottom, it would be, it would be, it would be right minus left. Right minus left. Right most minus left most. Because right is more positive and left is then, then more negative. So it would be right most curve minus left most curve. Now, if we go to here though, the problem is we're trying to do this with respect to y. So I need these to be in terms of y. Right now it's in terms of x. Right? For example, so the rightmost curve, actually, sorry, this curve is square root of x. This curve is y equals x minus 2. Is this where differential equations come in? No, not necessarily. I, it, it, actually, it's, they're just, we just put those together because it's like, I, have like a, I don't have quite a big enough unit for differential equations to give you a test, okay. and then enough for, so I just put it together. But, um, so again, if we're writing this in terms of y, allowing us to do right curve minus left curve, well, here's the rightmost curve, right? This curve is always to the right of that region, but it's in terms of x. How could we rewrite it in terms of y? And y equals x minus 2 is the same thing as what? 2 plus y equals x. x equals y plus 2, right? I add 2 to both sides. And so I can say y plus 2 here minus, and then what's the leftmost curve? Well, it's y equals the square root of x. But again, that's in terms of x. How could we rewrite this so it's in terms of y? y squared. x equals y squared. And so it's y plus 2 minus y squared dy. Okay. Now, this I'm going to go ahead and just type straight into my calculator. So math 9. Okay, and again, you might think, Mr. Woodmeyer, we need to use y's, don't we? No, it doesn't matter. x plus 2 minus x squared, comma, 0, comma, 2. I'm oh, sorry, comma, x, comma, 0, comma, 2. And you get the same exact answer. Except it's repeating that. Except it's, yeah, precise. That's weird. That's weird, yeah. Calculators were so I'm assuming this, there must have been an error in the calculator here, but not that the error was fixed here because maybe it was an easier calculation or something, because it should be precisely the same. But it does end up, when you round it, being the same thing. And they should be the same. Okay, so this is an alternative option here if we have this kind of um, situation where we can do a right curve minus left curve. Now, obviously, there's Sometimes when we just can't do that. I mean, for example, you know, in this problem here, it wouldn't really help to do with respect to y because if we go, if we integrate from, you know, bottom to top or whatever, well, we're changing our curve. This is our top curve here, and then that's our top curve. So it kind of changes. So it's not necessarily helpful there. But here it was helpful because our, t our rightmost curve was always, you know, the x minus 2. Our leftmost curve was always the square root of x. So it's got some, some use there with respect to y. But that's an option. You can do it with respect to y instead. Okay. All right. If you want to flip over here, now we're going to talk about question. something else. Yes, question. Is, that, is it ever more beneficial to integrate like that with respect to y? I would say in this case, instead of having to do two separate integrals, yeah. you do it with respect to one. Okay. Makes we're it, not going to be easier. forced to do it that way, per se? I don't... You could, I mean, you could write a problem... I could, I could give it to you with respect to y and then make it difficult to rewrite it in terms of x, if oh. that makes any sense. <coughs> so, okay. Sorry, let me get to my next bit here. Let me do it this way. So now we're going to get something that's really neat. I think it's really neat, okay? So, let me see if I can do this with my... My viewers, unfortunately, are going to be kind of... Let's see this, but, uh, um, sounds of revolution, <coughs> job, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So, you up Kill Street? Yes, of course I did. Mr. Wood's on the Google right now. Uh, Larson. Are you going to show us the Khan Academy video? No, I'm trying to show you guys, uh, I mean, it's up to you. If you gotta go, you gotta go. Do you search 
Should I wait like five minutes to do whatever words we're about to do right now? Uh, <laughs> no. No. All right, hang on. It's booting up here, folks. What does booting up refer to? Like putting shoes on, or where did that originate? Well, according to according to, I mean, my understanding of booting up is like a computer. Oh yeah, well, yeah I mean, the actual term. But the actual booting up, I mean, I don't know if that came back from the putting your boots on. It might be. I don't know. It's a good question. Well, computer does boot. If you just want to go, it's going to take it's taking a while to load up here. I don't know why. I didn't know boot was an actual like term. Yeah, it could be like suit up, boot up. I can see that. Yeah. All right, sorry for the delay here. Technology is wonderful when it works. I learned something today. What? Hey, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yo, Austin, Not in math class. I learned another thing. I learned something like in math class, class today. It was like doing a pull through and also was like turning right next to the parts class. And Joseph pulled too far and Austin like scraped the parts That's why he was in the parts class. Yeah. I saw that. Technically hers, but, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. He has enough, like, all of us were standing around, so he has enough witnesses that will testify, like, for him. Like, you're all his friends. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it varies by his opinion. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think that was all of us. I think it's gonna, he said he thinks it's gonna be, like, unique. So, like, they're each going to start a computer using a strap for C-Fars. I looked at the video, nothing came for you. I don't know why you're talking about C-Fars, but came from, like, they found a bug in the person's computer. And then like, yeah, there's a lot of Yeah, like when I got hit, um, you just did it Colin's insurance is going to be 600 and 200. That's like the one part of being a teenager is getting an insurance. I think it's working here. I don't know. Okay. I'm just glad I made it back to you. Well, I would assume you're... I don't know. Like, I feel like it's not as bad because you're on, like, your band insurance, but if you're, like, on your own, like, you're already paying a lot. They're probably just, like, don't have a car. Are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Huh? You know, I got off first, so I dropped out. Federal college. No, Emma, please don't throw things at people's faces. Even if they're willing to do it, I don't like it. Oh, yeah. That's why my dad's my dad's really like, 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 My rate is literally like fifty dollars right now. So. His rate will go up. He's gonna find the future. That's Well, it's illegal, but it's it's not illegal. There's no witness. That's funny. All right. No one came up. <laughs> oh, he didn't. See that. He just walked over. Yeah, so he knew that, he knew that your dad wasn't driving. He was not going to call the school. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're going to All right, this might work now. Okay, I think finally, maybe. All right, we'll see. Do you have a pocket? MSI afterburner on his double on top. All right, we'll see if I can get it to work here once I once we get to the point where we need it now. All right, anyway, sorry about that. Oh, I'm so sad. I looked at my watch earlier and I felt the hour hand was a minute hand. I thought we had like 20 minutes. You are wrong. <laughs> okay, so. In addition to area, we can also find volumes of solids using integrals. Okay, so we're going to be finding the volumes of three-dimensional solids, and we're going to be doing that two kind of two basic two ways here. One, okay, is taking the 
two-dimensional region in the coordinate plane and then rotating it about an axis to create a solid. Okay, and so thus creating a solid from a revolution or a solid of revolution. Okay, so if a region is revolved about a line, <coughs> the resulting solid is a solid of revolution, and the line, right, is called the axis of revolution. So if a region is rotated about a line, Okay, the resulting solid okay, is a solid of revolution. Okay. And the line of rotation is the axis of revolution. <coughs> Question? Yes. Will all these solids uh, be circular in nature? Uh, yes. As a result, yes. They will all kind of look like weird though. Yeah. Okay. The simplest of these solids is formed by taking a rectangle and rotating that rectangle about an axis that's adjacent to one side of the rectangle. So in other words, if I have like, you know, the coordinate plane here and I graph a rectangle, or we have a region that's a rectangle in shape, and if I were to rotate it about a side, one of its, or rotate it about like an adjacent side here, so like rotate it about this axis, okay, what kind of solid would we create if we rotated that rectangle? It would be a cylinder, exactly right, okay. The cylinder, Right now, if we take, talk about like um, H being the height of the rectangle and like W being the width, okay, when we rotate that, okay, so this is like this is like right up Emma's alley here. She's gonna be doodling these now, okay. E. Trying to think, like, am I going to see this? I don't even know. <laughs> Wait, what are those, like, multi sided things? Okay. Oh, so know? there it is. Okay, oh, yeah. so <laughs> three dimensionally, right? It makes a cylinder. All right, I'm going to try to pick this up. Are we going to have to I'll sketch a lot of these? It's helpful to, yes. <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> That's not exactly. <laughs> let me try let me try this. <coughs> Are you gonna show the graph for me? Let me get this to work, okay. Okay, so here you can see like a rec, like you can imagine like if we were to find the region, right? It's the rectangle right here. So it'd be like you know the you drop the verticals down there, and there's your region, right? I don't know if I can actually show the region or not. I don't think I can. Okay, I'm clearly pressing right click. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, let me just make sure. It doesn't look like I can. So I'll graph it along the x-axis, which is the line y equals zero here, and we'll go ahead and revolve that. Oh. Oh. And it's going kind of slowly there, but... Oh, so it makes a circle around? Yes. Oh. Oh, so the so axis right. actually kind of tilted in this picture. So I think it's because I made it be that way because it said medium. Like and so there, if I turn it, okay, you can see... Okay, there it is, three-dimensionally, right? So it creates a cylinder, okay? The radius of the cylinder is the what of the rectangle? Radius the height. The radius is the height of the rectangle. So be, let's think about that again, right? So the radius of the cylinder was the height of the rectangle off that x-axis, okay? The width of the rectangle becomes the what of the cylinder? The height. 
Okay, you see that? So there it is. I don't know why I didn't fill it in there. Let me see if I can like. Oh, you. I leave it like a zero, maybe. No, it. No. Oh, there you go. Solid. Thank you. <coughs> All right. So now let's try it. I'll go fast because that way it'll. Oh, I thought it was just chugging. <laughs> I think it'll fill it in once it's done. It might be just chugging. It could be because I'm also like recording and things too, though. What do you bring in the rig? Um, uh, the uh, software that came with this. Ah, uh, you're not Brad. Advertision. <laughs> yeah, no, not Brad or anything going like that. Going all the way around. And it'll, it'll hmm? it I guess it doesn't. It is. It's not solid. Interesting. Well, anyway. I think it's because it's an unbound thing. Like you just have uh, a line. You have to make it a rectangle. Get the graph like, like x equals five and x equals something to make it an actual rectangle. Hmm. I see what he's saying. Oh, go down. Leave blank for disk method. Yeah. So that's what. Yeah. So well. Anyway, we'll we'll talk about that. Anyway, so it should be filled in. I don't know why it didn't fill it in, but there it is. Okay. So that's the idea. So, um, obviously, when we change the shape, though, when we change the region, it'll change then the solve that we create through, through from the uh, rotation and stuff like that. Okay. So. <coughs> Okay, and I'm gonna, I feel like I should have. Uh, okay, there we go. So, the volume of the cylinder is equal to pi raised squared all oh right times height. That's, that is one problem. I have one get, uh, VGA cable. Are there not two inputs on there? There are, but I just don't have another VGA cable with oh, me right yeah. now. No, I got one. I've got one, I'm sure. Okay. Sorry. So there it is. I, there is the volume formula for a cylinder, right? V equals pi times radius squared times the height. Okay. So that's the volume for that basic shape. But what if we have something that's more like curve-like? Something we're more used to, like a function. It looks like that. Okay, and let's say we got like there's A and there's B. So again, it's got like you know a left hand and a right hand, you know, kind of bound there too. And let's say this is the function f of x. Okay, and now if we rotate this, I'm going to be very careful. Sorry, I know you guys are maybe copying still, but. All right, that's not great, but anyway, you get the idea. Okay, let's say we rotate this. Okay, that creates our solid right there. Yeah, the looking thing. We call it. There's no, there's no, I don't have a name for it. You can lumpy come with a yeah, lumpy. We rotate that about the x-axis. <coughs> sure. <laughs> call it that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is determining the radius of this solid? Again, if you think about the center, the center is the axis of revolution, right? The radius, then, is the distance from the center to an endpoint, right, yeah. on the shape. So what's determining the distance, the length of the radius here? Doesn't the radial height the vary from the x-axis? The height of the function, the function itself, right? Yeah. The function off, the distance from the function off the x-axis so there, okay. which is just the function value. Yeah, and okay? it varies, right? So, and it's going to vary, but again, that's the function that's doing that for us. And so you can imagine here that in the radius, then, okay, is going to be replaced with function. So the volume is going to be something like pi times like function squared, okay, and then the height, well it's these, we're going to do a bunch of these little things, and so we're going to basically, going to be that, like a dx here, and it's going to end up being that. The integral of the square of the function dx, pi times the integral, 
Okay. From A to B, right? From A to B, yeah, from A to B. Sorry, thank you. Yep, from A to B. The negative area? Okay. Okay? Now, you look here, right? We have all these little disks. I mean, so, like, you might say, Mr. Moore, how does a cylinder relate to this? Well, because we're going to use that integral idea of putting all these little rectangles in here of different heights, and they're going to be infinitesimally thin. Of course, I'm drawing not infinitesimally thin, thin and they're just going to rotate all these little disks to be able to ac accumulate that area. And they all rotate and create that volume there. Okay. <laughs> Using disks. And so this method is called the disk method because I guess cylinder method doesn't sound as cool. Okay. To find the volume of a solid revolution, With the disk method, and we'll learn another method called the washer method, but okay, use one of the following. Yeah. Okay, if you have a horizontal axis of revolution. then you say volume equals pi. Don't forget that pi. Okay? Very easy because we've been working so frequently now with um, you know, definite integrals where we don't have to put the pi out front, but because we're rotating here, right, the volume formula for a cylinder has pi r squared h, we need to have that pi out front. So it's pi times, and because you forget it and then you lose points. Okay? And I don't want you guys to miss it for something silly like that. So it's pi times the integral from a to b of your radius function squared dx. Okay? And then we have a we have a, a one for a vertical axis of revolution too. So should we decide to rotate things with a vertical axis of revolution, instead of everything being with respect to x, it'll now be with respect to y. So volume equals pi times the integral, and we'll say from C to D, of R of Y squared dy. Okay. Is that why you introduced it in class? Just to show it. Mm -hmm. Yep, give you the idea there. Okay. Okay. So let's try a problem here. So find the volume. of the solid of revolution formed <coughs> by rotating the region bounded by the graph f of x equals the square root of the sine of x and the x-axis for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi about the x-axis.
Okay. Negative five. Is it typically calculated problems? Or yeah. yeah. But sometimes they're not, but in general they are. Why is that? That is weird. All right. <coughs> so let's see what this region looks like. So I'm going to graph the square root of sine of x. Well, I'm only going to choose the window to be from 0 to pi. So I went from x min 0 to, to, to x max pi. Can I graph it? And there it is. Okay, my y max is like 3 and negative 3. It goes from negative 3 to 3. So there it is, right there. So if I graph that, let's see here. So that would be 2 pi. Yeah. Is that what you got? Yeah. So here's like pi there. Here's like the value of 1. So it goes up to 1 and then back down to pi, like that. <coughs> and we're going to rotate that about the x-axis. <coughs> so this region here is going to rotate down, okay, to... to there. Okay, we kind of create yeah, a football or lemon looking thing. Okay. Okay, you can kind of see the solid there, yeah? Hopefully my <coughs> drawing is good. I don't know why, I was trying to show it to you here, but for some reason I'm not getting the right Say, sorry? Give it three dimensions. Yeah, yeah, I drew those in there just to kind of give it, make it look three-dimensional and not flat. And I was, I was going to try and show it to you here, but for some reason, I can't, it doesn't show up right. Sure, there must be a better way. Mm -hmm. Better. Go on SketchUp. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better way. Is that a good program for rotating solids? No. Is that a good program for I accidentally drew it in like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not a good program. You want to no, it's, yeah. <laughs> Don't get your words twisted. <laughs> Don't get your words twisted. I mean, it's not a good program. If you want to get frustrated to the point where you want to smash your head through the computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had Yeah, yeah we had Andrew. 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 I lost Caleb's public here. <laughs> I really Why? 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 I'll play around. I'll play around. I had it in my bag. Well, I was a student club. I took it to the whole time. And this guy took it. I'm sorry, I don't know, I can't get it to pull up here, I apologize, I'll stop wasting time here. So, um, back to this though. So we want to find the volume of this. So volume is equal to pi times the integral from A to B of our radius of our region, or sorry, the radius of our solid, I should say, squared, with respect to x, right? We want to use the respect to x1 because we have a horizontal axis of revolution, right? The x-axis is our axis of revolution, and so horizontal axis. All right, so question. Why don't we do radius cubed because we're working with three-dimensional shapes? Because we will end up with a cubic area because we're taking the radius 
squaring it and then multiplying oh. by the little change in x. So it's going to be oh. x squared here times another x, little x there, resulting in a cubic Those value. So, okay. So, what's our radius here? What thing is determining our radius of our of region? It's the square root of sine of x, right? It's this, this distance, this height off the x-axis. What's determining the height off the x-axis? The function, square root of sine of x. So it's going to be equal to pi times the integral. Ooh, what's our limits of integration going to be? Zero to pi. Zero to pi, right. We start at zero, go to pi, and then we're going to take the square root of sine of x squared with respect to x. Ooh. Question. Will the uh, equation to determine the radius ever not be the function? We may have to adjust it. Okay. We may have to adjust it, yes. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll see those kind of situations. All right, so this is pretty easy. What's the square root of sine of x squared? Sine of x. Just sine of x. And so we have pi times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx. What's the integral of sine? Cosine. Or negative cosine. Negative cosine. So we have pi times the times negative cosine of x plus c, I guess, we'll throw it in there, from 0 to pi. Okay. And so I'm going to say pi times negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of 0. No. If you do it, I don't think they're going to take off points. No. No. Okay. So there it is. We just plug in our upper limit. All right, I, left the, I left the pi out. If you wanted to, you could just say, you could distribute the pi through and say negative pi cosine pi minus negative pi cosine zero. Okay. What's cosine of pi? Cosine of pi. Is negative one. So it's negative negative one becomes positive one. So it's pi times one minus, what's cosine of zero? One. One. So it's negative one, but it's minus negative one. So it becomes just two pi. So the volume of that solid is 2 pi. 2 pi. All right, let's try another one. You can show You don't have to. Not inappropriate. We'll go to green paper because that's what's handy. Changing colors. I don't have green paper. I'm sorry. I don't have the green paper. You guys are screwed, sorry. Imagine it's green. Find the volume of the solid. We'll do two more here, so this is the next one. Hopefully we have time for two more. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region uh, bounded by f of x equals 2 minus x squared and g of x equals 1 about the line y equals 1. Right, so this one I think I can get to work. <coughs> yeah. No, you don't have to put like cubic units or anything like that. Because, um, yeah, it's just units, so. Okay. So, the graph of this, okay, if we look here, let's go to our graphing calculators. 2 minus x squared. And g of x equals 1, so that's the other curve. And so we'll grow. Oops. Okay, so it's a parabola. And g of x equals 1. Now, if you look here, we kind of create a lot of regions here, right? We have like a region here, a region here, a region here, a region here. And we have like 
this infinite region here, this infinite region here, infinite regions here, 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 and here. So what is the region that we're talking about here? Well, it says the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by these two things and these two things alone. There's only one region in this picture that has only these two curves as its boundary. And so what is that region? Yep, it's this little piece right in here. Little bump right in there. Okay. So, and if you look here, where do they intersect? Yeah, it's 1 and negative 1. If you look here, the intersection point there is exactly 1 and negative 1. Negative 1. One, okay, and so to graph this region, sketch a graph here. <coughs> we'll go from negative one to one, and it looks like it goes up to two, so it's going to kind of like It's not really a semicircle. It kind of looks like that, but it's not a semicircle. Anywho, something like that. Okay. And of course, if you rotate that, what will it look like? Well, let me show you. <laughs> Somebody screwed in my screw. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that again, and I was just like. Screw you, Mr. Wid. Mr. Wid, you got Literally. All right, so there's our region. Okay, and we want to rotate it across the line y equals 1. So here we go. Let's, I'll do it fast. Revolve. There it goes. That's fast, by the way. Hold on, Mr. Wade. Slow down a little bit. That's not y equals 1. Too wild. It is, if it counts because it's counting the blocks. Are one, two. So there's our solid. It's beautiful. Feeling there's a little hole though, right? Look at that! <laughs> it kind of looks like a ball, but it's not because it's kind of pointy on the ends, right? It's like a lemon. It looks like a lemon, yeah, a squished lemon or something like that. Actually, there's the volume right there, 3.35. So hopefully we get the same answer. Yeah, that's really it, wait, seriously, you want to do it again? No. 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 Doing so, yeah, right, we'll be here five hours later. Okay. So. This solid is going to rotate about the line y equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to draw that in here too. This is our axis of revolution here. And so it creates this kind of solid. <laughs> okay, something like that. There's our solid. Okay. <clears throat> so again, volume equals pi times the integral. What are limits of integration here? Negative 1 to 1. Are we okay with that? Negative 1 to 1? Yes, it is negative 1 to 1, right? Because that's where our x values start and they stop at 1. Okay. What is our radius, though? Ooh. Bam. Okay, so let's think about this real quick here. All right, let's think here first. All right. Our radius is always from the center of rotation. Okay? So this height from here to here, this distance, is that the, is that the function value? The function value is not from here to here. Where does the function always measure its height from? From the axis up. All right? So again, from here down to here, that is F. That's the height of f yeah. from the x-axis up. But we don't want that. We want the height. We want from the center of rotation to here. We want from here to there. What should we do? Subtract. We have to subtract off this value here, right? What is this value? Well, it's 1, right? The, it's, it shifted everything up 1. So we need to take our radius here. Our radius is going to be the function 2 minus x squared and minus 1 and that quantity squared. Okay? Now, 
So you understand here, because we have a different axis of rotation, we had to make an adjustment here. Curve minus the axis. Okay? And so we'll type into our calculators here. So I'm going to do it with my calculator. So pi times math 9, the integral of the quantity 2 minus x squared. Oops, I need to do another set of parentheses, it looks like. And you guys can just follow along if you don't want to do this one on your own here. Squared, comma, x, comma, negative 1, comma, 1. Okay, 3.35, just like what the, um, 3.351, just like what the computer thing predicted their program. Okay, 3.351. If I divide by pi here, Okay, or more specifically, it is exactly 16 pi over 15. Okay. All right. Now, check this out, though. What if we got it backwards? What if I changed it up and said, okay, instead of 2 minus x squared minus 1, what if I did it backwards and said 1 minus 2 minus x squared? So in other words, I do it, I do axis minus curve instead. Well, we end up with the same exact thing, okay? No, it's it's going to intrude in general because we're squaring. Because we're squaring, it doesn't result in doesn't matter, all right? So it doesn't matter whether you what you do here, but basically what I'm trying to show you here is that when your <coughs> axis of rotation is something other than the x-axis or other than the y-axis, you have to make an adjustment to your radius, okay? And so in summary, let me just kind of summarize here. So. In summary, okay, for an axis of rotation other than the x-axis, use volume equals pi times the integral from A to B of curve minus axis quantity squared, okay, or pi times the integral from A to B of axis minus curve. It doesn't matter which one you do. They're both be the same thing. Okay, you have to make an adjustment there because your axis of rotation is not just the x-axis. Okay, but either do a curve minus axis or axis minus curve. It doesn't matter, but it will result in the correct when you square it there, it'll resolve in the same answer. So, A to B. All right, we got to stop there. So, there's that.